So greetings to everyone who is listening in. My name is Lunath, your main host of Close Encounters of the Dragon Kind, and I am a Lyco Draconic Werewolf who is spiritually connected to a divine celestial draconian being who goes by the same name. The topic of this podcast is going to be the his- the history of the Dragon Kind community from the early 1990s to the present day, as well as the experiences had within certain time frames of the community. The Dragon Kind community surprisingly has a good amount of events and websites spanning from 1993 to the present day. Though sadly, there is very little information regarding the history of the Dracona community pre-internet and pre-1993, sadly. If only there was more, though. Sadly, no. Do the other hosts want to introduce themselves? Yeah, to make it short and quick, um, my name is Bela. Um, I'm basically representing the, I would say, the European dragons in here currently for this discussion. And actually... Not much more to say about that. Hi. Understandable. Right. Um, well, I'm Okura Wintermiss. Uh, I suppose I represent the oceanic end of things. Uh, that's namely Australia. I gotta say, though, we don't have much of a history on this side of the planet regarding all this. But this is a topic I take interest to nonetheless, and I'm happy to participate in the uh, discussion. Also, I am a, um, at this point, occasional speaking host for this podcast. Yee, yeah, that's fair. So if none of the other hosts have anything to add, I'll go ahead and start with a abridged or general overview of the draconic community history that I've gathered. Okay, since, since listing every single site and space dedicated to the draconic community would take absolutely forever and since podcasts are meant more for discussions rather than lectures again it, i'll just give very abridged overview the more eventful parts of draconic community history just to keep things kind of short and to leave room for more discussion credit to house of chimera's draconic community timeline the draconity faq on tomorrowlands and the dragon's valley resource list as well as an other wiki and other kin wiki for archiving this valuable information. So firstly, generally what is considered the first website centered around Draconity is the site alt.fan.dragons. It was created in 1993 as an internet forum for dragon lovers and individuals who identified as Draconic. It's not a dragon kind specific site, though it did welcome Draconic identifying individuals alongside role players, writers, and lovers of dragons. Alt.fan.dragons was created about a year after the creation of the website alt.horror.werewolves, which was a website dedicated to the discussion of other kiddity and therianthropy. I believe it was one of the first, if not the first, websites centered around the discussion of therianthropy and other kiddity. Alt.fan.dragons would later be split into a subsite called Alfandria. It was a muck server centered around dragons and draconic identity. Around 1994, a dragon code was created. It's essentially a computer code for dragons and draconic identifying individuals. That's really all I know about it personally. I can actually give a little bit more insights on this. So, yeah, um, in the early 90s, the first, I guess I would say the root of all of these codes, the dragon code being one of them, was actually the geek code, where you could, um, how would I say it? It was effectively a set of characters that could be translated into a personal calling card for um, somebody. Uh, the geek code would allow you to describe how your life is effectively, what kind of software and hardware you know you're into. Uh, that was eventually deviated into other things such as the furry code where you could describe your species or whatever else have you and the various attributes of that. And uh, ultimately, the dragon code was one of the derivatives from that. I hope that made sense. Yeah, that that's really interesting. Thank you for adding. No worries. I um I have a fascination with the old internet a little bit too much for my own good. No worries. I completely understand. Let's see, after that I wrote... In 1996, Dragonfire.com was created as a sort of connected website to alt.fan.dragons. In 1996, worm.demon.co.uk 
was created and archived on the Wayback Machine. Currently, it's a website that has general information on dragons in mythology and media, as well as a list of dragon kin and the links to their websites and blogs. In 1998, the Dracodic.com website was created, an internet forum for a dragon kind identifying individuals to discuss their experiences and just Dracodity in general. The website is still up and running today, though it is largely inactive. Let's see. In October of 1998, Baxel, I think that's how you pronounce their name, created the Dracodity FAQ website, though it was later moved to the Tomorrowlands website in 2000. In April of 2000, the first recorded Yahoo chat room or Yahoo groups for Dragonkind called True Worms, or Worm as in W-Y-R-M-S, was created for individuals who identify as Dragonkind to speak and make meaningful connections. There were a lot more Yahoo chat rooms for Dragonkind and Dragonkind, Dragonkind and Draconic identifying individuals to speak and make meaningful connections, though I'm not going to go over all of them. It would take too long. In April of 2001, the website Nexus Draconis was created for Draconics and Draconic identifying individuals who speak German. In 2003, the website Draconomicon was established for Dragonkind identifying individuals and fans of dragons. In May of 2003, the website Draconity.org was created as an extension and recreation of Draconomicon.com. The forum slash website is still active today under the new owner, Selroth. In March of 2004, the live journal groups Draconix and We Are Dragon were created on the same day, actually. In January 2006, the recorded instance of an article centered around Draconity and Dragonkind identifying individuals was published on Wikipedia. It was titled Draconity. And in December of 2006, generally considered the first recorded published article in a newspaper mentioning dr- Dragonkind and Draconic identifying individuals was published in December 2006. The, Minneap- the Minneapolis Star Tribune mentioning individuals who identify as dragons or draconic. Lastly, from what I have on here, in July of 2014, the Ivory Tower Forum was created as a website where draconic identifying individuals could interact and have discussions regarding draconity. Generally, most history beyond 2016 is generally recorded, like Discord spaces, Telegram chats. It's usually internet history pre-2012, 2016, whatever, that's generally recorded. And more recent history in regards to this server, the Spire, the Celestial Spire was created in January of 2019. The, the first Draconic Summit took place in autumn of 2022. And the first Draconic Summit meetup will be taking place in October 2024. That's really the most recent in reference to this server. Generally throughout the 1990s, early 2000s, there were many public and private IRC chat rooms, which stands for Internet Relay Chat. A lot of them were created to allow discussion of Draconic identity. And sadly, most of these internet spaces no longer exist. Nowadays, Discord servers like this one And Telegram chat rooms are really the only internet chat spaces where Dragonkind and other kind of generals speak, really. Since IRC chat rooms, Yahoo groups, internet forums, Skype chat rooms, and even mailing lists are pretty much long gone, sadly. The original alt.fan.dragons Google group is still up, though it is very inactive. And sadly, as of February 22nd, 2024... Google Groups will be, they will no longer be accepting new submissions. So from what I understand, the sites will become largely inactive and unable to be added to. And that's really all I have on the abridged timeline. If there's anything I missed, others are free to let my being know or add on to them. Maybe if I, if I did hear it correctly, and I think you maybe haven't noticed, uh, noticed it, um, noted it, was I think was it 2013 or 2014? I think one of the larger US communities, forum-based community, was created, but it was also closed. I think it was 2022 in autumn or in uh, spring 23. Something a little bit. On that. A little bit more on that. Kin Community, uh, formerly known as Wolf Howl, it wasn't 
I mean, it wasn't exactly a draconic focused community, so I'm not sure how far it goes in the scope of this conversation. Um, Kin Unity slash formerly uh, previously known as Wolfhell was a community that went through multiple uh, multiple iterations of being shut down and reopened throughout the span of the 2010s and the early 2020s. The last version of it was a Mastodon page that I believe went down in mid-2022. But again, mm -hmm. um, it doesn't hold as much, unless if there's something crucial I'm missing here, I don't believe it holds too much relevance to Draconity in particular, rather rather being an overarching uh, ultra-human community site. Yeah, you're right on that. It was like more of a general theory on Tropy and other Kinity project and not um, focused specifically on Draconity. Yeah, that's understandable. I I don't really like to associate myself with a community, so I won't get into that here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. I was just uh, just wanted to to add that as a piece of history, but um, as Alcura said, it was not specifically Draconic orientated. I mean, yeah, that's a... Oh, sorry, sorry, go on. No, I was going to say, yeah, that's understandable. I mean, <laughs> there is, uh, uh, as far as, like, knowledge on this stuff goes, there is a bit of an interesting pocket that many people don't, that many people within our community don't know, slash may not, slash may not discuss, because they don't see it as anything too, too significant. Uh, have either of you heard of the game Istaria? I vaguely I, heard of it. I also it is heard, the, heard about it, yeah. Yeah, it is. Um, it's actually, I think it's more popular among the uh, European side of the community as um, um, as opposed to North America, um, etc. It is, uh, it's got a reputation for being the only game in which you can, the only playable MMO in which you can play as a dragon. Uh, and a lot of the Dragonkin community, um, Hangs a lot of the modern, um, I wouldn't say modern, but a lot of the longer standing members of the Dragon King community can can actually be found there. Yeah, that's Ooh, interesting. Um, mm -hmm. From non MMO uh, games, so rather to a single player games, um, there was also um, Divinity 2 Ego Draconis. I think it was published in 2000. 10 or 2011, somewhere around that vicinity. And um, it was also a game where you could play from the perspective of a, of a dragon. Though I would not say it was or it is um, specifically um, dragonkin orientated, like Asteria was. I think it was created by a, a, by a dragonkin, but please correct me if I'm wrong there. I don't... Honestly, this is something I may need to read into because, um, um, because if true, it wouldn't be surprising, but it would be pretty um amusing. Not gonna lie, uh, considering so the game has twelve separate races, but the only really interesting one are dragons. So that would actually be quite funny. Um, however, I haven't seen any documented evidence to um to to confirm uh what you said on. Unfortunately, because now I really want it to be true. Yeah. Yeah, that's understandable. Oh, there is one piece of Draconic community history that I forgot to add that I was thinking of in my own experience. The DeviantArt groups. There were a lot of, well, not a lot. There were a few really active DeviantArt groups when the site was used in like the early 2000s from late. I think 2012 or 2011 is when they started to go really inactive. Though I first joined the community, the other kin community, through the DeviantArt groups around 2011. So yeah, I, I can't believe I forgot that. Huh. Would actually, yeah, it would actually make sense that DeviantArt would um would harbor those types. I mean, DeviantArt was a pretty central meeting point for a lot of um how should I say, alternative cultures. Uh, with that being said... Hmm. I actually forgot what I was going to say. Uh, apologies. No um, worries. Yeah, I mean, DeviantArt... Uh, 
I guess the early 2010s, that was when the transition from dedicated forums and message boards and uh, channels, uh, how should I, I'll, I'll start the sentence over. The early 2010s is roughly when the, um, when the real shift from dedicated message boards and forums, etc. to social media begun. So DeviantArt, Tumblr, ugh, Facebook even. It makes sense. So maybe oh, yeah. maybe a question from my side, um, if I may, Luna. Um, mm -hmm. So w what is your take on that? So what do you think um, had changed within the community in that time during that transition from forums to social media to uh, to Discord? So that, because that was um, a very, like from my perception, I've been in the community since 2007, um, so I've witnessed um, a kind, a, that, that kind of transition. And I have my own opinion on that, of course. But uh, what is your take on that? Uh, that's understandable. Um, let's see. Well, I only joined the community, like I said, in late 2011. So that was when forums started to, let's say, die out. I stopped hanging around in the community from around... 2013 to 2014, around 2015, I started getting into DeviantArt groups again. And then I moved to Tumblr when I can say that the, the general presence of the Dracona community on Tumblr has changed in my experience. From 2016 to 2018, it used to be more, in, in my experience, I guess, tight-knit. Though since then, it's just kind of disbanded, I suppose, due to drama and whatnot. That's just my general experience seeing things. I wish that I was around more to see the forums, though sadly I joined when they started dying out, so. So big oof on my end. <laughs> uh, yeah, from, from my perspective, um, I always had the thought that in the times where discussions happened in forums, discussions were usually a tad deeper um, in the sense of that you could talk over a topic in um, over days or even several weeks. And you had you could always read back the whole the whole topic. You could always read ba back every thread to it and post to it. And you had actually time to reflect upon an answer and this usually was in my experience at least a little bit deeper to, um, than it is nowadays on discord or maybe back in the days on irc chat so i still remember a few chats on quakenet and uh, i see discord more in the irc region so in the in the chat region than in the forum um region if if i would say so and the the discussions here also are um can go deep but as we all know um there are a lot of users especially on the server and um there are a lot of things that need to be discussed and there's just for example one channel about Dracon draconic discussions. So this ultimately leads to the to the fact that um even if there are like hundreds of new messages it's really hard to stay upon a topic so that was my perspective on it oh yeah i absolutely agree forms they allow for more time to write out responses more time to reflect and in forums you can return to any conversation you want to whenever you can revive it at any time whatsoever so on discord conversations get buried and like, for some reason, there's this weird internet etiquette at times where, saying, I guess some people are like, they get upset sometimes when you revive old conversations. I never understood that personally. So a lot of times there's some kind of hesitance, if hesitance is even a word, to revive old conversations if you have something to add on sites like Discord or social media or whatnot or oh, digging up old comments. Why are you digging up old comments? This is from a year ago. And it's just like, I, I just want to have 
discussion and go back on something, though, some internet etiquette says, no, you can't do that. And it's kind of disappointing that with forms, you can return on any conversation you want, whenever you want, have time to reflect on it. And if you're looking, if you're looking for deeper discussion, forums are definitely the place to go. Though sadly, so few are active. I have yeah. another kin form, though. I haven't been keeping up with it. That's my bad. Yeah, for me, it's if I can put it into a picture or into a different framing. I would say um, Discord is like a TV show, and forums were more like a book. In a book, you have uh, you, you can always read back. You have very elaborated um, takes on topics. And on a TV show, usually it's a different kind of media. Um, you get also information, of course. It's not the one is bad and the one is not bad. Both are somewhat equal, but the focus is different. And that's how I also take Discord to forums. I think that's a perfect way to describe it, actually. Especially because on Discord, it's so hard to dig up old things. Like, if you want to go back on one conversation that isn't saved, you have to scroll up and up and up. Though forums, you can just use the search feature on a conversation and it'll just pop up. It's more easily uh, accessible. Discord does have a search feature, though. On mobile, I know it's been pretty heavily hamstrung, but... It's usable on desktop. The only real caveat there is, um, from a more technical standpoint, you'd have to know what specific keywords you're after and in what order those keywords are. Uh, forums have the added bonus of working however they want, so with a well-built form, you could just type in a list of keywords and everything relevant would pop up, regardless of order or in order, however you wanted to make the search. So Discord's quite limiting in a, in how it lets you dig up old con. If you, it certainly does if you're desperate enough. Hmm. Yeah, that's understandable. Uh, looks like Akir asked, "Where do you think we go after Discord? Will there be a need to return to forms?" Um, the way I see that, uh, I don't mean to sound pessimistic, but it's um. The only way has been down in terms of like methods of communication for some time. I fear that I fear that if Discord becomes um outdated, we might have the uh TikTok version of um of you know a communications platform. So even less methods to archive old conversations. Um things like things being considered necro topics within like within a few days or a week max um with that on a more optimistic standpoint though um it would be very likely that an exodus from discord would be because people are fed up of um faster methods of communication so i could see forums getting a bit of a resurgence as a result of people getting tired of discord i've actually seen that a bit as well like People have been voluntarily embracing, um, uh, like, I wouldn't say mailing lists because those are basically impossible um, um, at, at this point, save for a few niche scenarios. But I have seen a very small uptick in people preferring forums over, over Discord, uh, especially in this community, too. I mean, there are a few forums that I've seen with reasonable success in regards to the Ulster Human community in general, but they are a bit difficult to find and they're not generally that popular at the moment, at least. Hmm, yeah. That, yeah. That's entirely understandable. I know like TikTok, if, if there ever does come a point where the more popular mode of communication between all the human communities is something like TikTok, that's the moment I <laughs> become inactive from the other kin community. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't mean to be pessimistic once again, but for a lot of the younger community, seems to be a topic that comes up often here, um, for the younger community, Discord acts as a complement to TikTok, so you're not too far off the mark there, buddy, and um, I am very sad to say that. 
Yeah, there's, and that's another thing. There's a, there's definitely, how do I say, a gap between younger members of the Draconic community and the older members of the Draconic community who remember like IRC chat rooms and yeah, forums it, and things it, like that. It's not exactly, yeah. Whilst nobody is really trying to say abandon, like reject, reject the ways of the new and um, um, and uh, return to the ancestral path. There is definitely lessons we could learn from how this community operated in the um in the past and try to lean back towards them. Sorry, yeah. I see. I also, yeah, that's understandable. I also think that. Um, sorry if I interrupted you. Oh, um, it's okay. I also think that the community, basically, in my point of view, uses what is there. I mean, if we see why, if, or if we take a look at why Discord was created, and for what focus group Discord was created, it was created for gamers, and what are or were were and are uh, and will be gamers needs so they combined basically an irc chat with a capability of doing voice chats where back in the days so 2015 and prior you needed separate programs for this you used to have teamspeak or ventrilo and now discord creates or combines both features into one software um what and and the community, and spe especially the 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 not only the draconic community but the other con and Therian community as a whole uses that spaces the same way it uses, for example, Twitter or XNow or Tumblr, or the different spaces to connect. But every space has a separate, um, how should I call it, separate, um, yeah, some sort of meta meta topic on what is to be discussed so when you're limited for example on 140 signs on twitter it's different kind of discussion or communication than in an irc like chat space so what would be great from my point of view would be if discord because i actually like discord very much um if they would implement a better system to um to use forum features. I mean, there are there there is the possibility to use threads now, but it's in my opinion rather poorly implemented. It's not this of of course not the same thing um, as it has been with forums because it's basically basically a, a thread structure within a chat. So maybe that's at least what I would wish. Um, there will be a possibility somehow um, maybe within Discord, maybe after Discord, that there is something that you can build up, like sort of a of a of a space where we have that chat capability and still have, uh, for example, a separate separate buttons or separate spaces where you can add uh, forum-like discussions to it. So maybe broaden the concept of Discord, not abandon it. Um, that would be yeah a humble wish of mine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's understandable. Yeah, I definitely think Discord's forum feature and thread feature, it, it doesn't have the same feel as forums from like 1990s, 2000s, from like 2012 or 2013. It, it doesn't have the same feel. And Discord is trying to replace every other space on the internet. So it really doesn't work most of the time. Yeah, I mean, the internet and the communication as a whole has changed and uh, we as a community are trying to, to pace up and take, take the pace of, of the internet or the ways of communication inside internet culture as a whole, I would say. Mm -hmm. And communication on the internet as a whole is generally changing in like terms of if I'm making sense, in terms of like slang and internet jokes yeah. and memes and whatnot, I don't even understand it anymore. I'm t I'm bodily yeah. 22 and I don't even understand what the hell is going on with TikTok or the Gen Z slang or 
I gotta say, I think, uh, I don't think it's meant to be understood to be, um, to be entirely frank. I think the humor of a lot of, uh, modern memes is that they're just completely ridiculous. Yeah, it falls into the category of, of absurdism. Yeah. Yeah. I just prefer the way communication used to be. That's just my being, personally. Uh, did anyone address um, Akira's question, But by the way? Quote, How do you think the other kid, or in this case, Dragon King communities, will try to stay together in the fast space internet despite that extremely cursed um, outlook? It won't. <laughs> um, that's the short answer. The long answer is, um, much like a lot of other communities that currently exist, um, there will be pockets. Uh, some will be larger, some will be smaller, some will be better known, and some will prefer to stay within obscurity. I don't think there will be a great unifier or equalizer at all. Uh, I think we're well. I think I think we're well past that point, and in certain ways, that may not be the worst thing. Yeah, that's understandable. Will the, on on regarding will there be a merging of community slash sites despite an obvious growth of beings identifying as other kin? I think in some cases, though, I think niche communities will like this one will still exist because some individuals prefer really niche communities more than how do you say generalized or not generalized? I guess more inclusive. Communities, if that makes sense. Let's see, where are we going to house everyone? How do we keep the community together as a whole? I don't really have an answer to that question personally. I just wanted to to quickly add. I think the the question will be, um, how large will that community will get then? And if it gets large enough, I can, I can, I, I can perceive it that uh, that it will get to a to a point where um yeah let let's let's say that the internet is not enough anymore and we see the same thing happening the last i would say 10 to to 12 years with the lgb community that was also back in the days um a rather secluded internet community if i would say so but um people who feeling misgendered or um feeling that their gender is not um yeah it put, put, like displayed in a, in a well manner for them if, if i can say it that way um that they, uh, they they pushed out and made that uh basically a public topic so and i don't see Actually, even though that that some may not like it, but this let's say this is my opinion. Um, I don't see that the when you break it down the the um, the fact that identifying as a different gender or identifying as a different species is not so far away, at least from my perception, it is it. And if this community will get large enough, I think we will also see a push through. Or um, at least an integration, in some way or another, to the LGP community. LGB community. That's already mm -hmm. happening. Um, I can confidently say that's already happening, even if it's not an outwardly spoken of matter. Um, the rhetoric uh, within our communities are, is starting to gradually become uh, similar. Um, I do recall uh, a pivotal moment I saw this happening was what was that what was that web what was that webcon's name uh, othercon I think it was the one um the one which uh page headlined uh the one that started in 2020 that's othercon othercon yep yeah, yeah um I think it was either othercon 21 or 22 um there were a few. There was a very interesting paradigm shift, uh, which again, uh, that was one of the first times I actually saw alter, alter humanity get politicized in the manner that that it did. 
And one thing I did notice was, well, the rhetoric um, melding in the um, in the exact way that um, Bella's pretty much um, brought up the brought up the possibility of. So the way I perceive it, it's it's already happened. Um, is it going to become a bigger? Is um, is it going to grow? Um, is the uh, question, and if it does grow. What impact will it have on the rest of us? Mm -hmm. That's understandable. Mm. Yeah, I've definitely, well, I've definitely noticed how the LGBT plus community and the alter human community have sort of, they have similarities nowadays. Like people are, and I don't necessarily condemn this, obviously, though many other kin and alter humans they create kin pride flags. Xenogenders are starting to make more of an acceptance in the community and they're being discussed more, which I'm glad because, you know, xenogenders, they're, I think they're an important matter to discuss in the community since I know discussing, well, identifying as non human and identifying as another gender. I can see how those two go in hand in hand, especially as someone who is, who has their gender identity influenced by their non-humanity. I can definitely see how the two go hand in hand. Which is completely respectable. Uh, Rook, but, uh, apologies for this, but Rook, I'm gonna have to very quickly uh, retort that statement. Uh, the reason I'm not a fan of, I mean, I wouldn't say not a fan, but the reason that I'm a bit weary of these two worlds colliding is that we're not an oppressed demographic. Ultra humans are not an oppressed demo are not an oppressed demographic. Historically they never have been, and uh to this day they still are not. Um as a matter of fact, the only reason we're starting to see this become a problem now is because people kept melding these two concepts um together. There is similarities, there is some accuracies to it, but I feel like it's been way, way overblown. It feels like we can do a whole topic on that, uh, a whole podcast on that topic alone, because it has so much to say about it. But I believe, I think, uh, to, I to... believe we effectively did, though. Recent, um, uh, the discussion that followed um, the pilots um, actually went quite, I believe, um, ended up going quite heavily into that. But um, up, but apologies, go on, please. No, I just wanted to say, I think maybe this, um, I would say I can agree to, to some points you mentioned, although I think that if this community will grow, it may happen that oppression will get a topic on its own because what uh, oppression in my, from my perspective, oppression is happening when a group gets large enough that it cannot be overseen by um, the bigger group, so the society around us, and the people within that society are not able to empathize with that subgroup enough. And I think um, that creates a distance, and I think this is the point where oppression may occur. Mm -hmm. I can understand that. For my being... I'm not going to get too polarizing here. Those who have read my previous messages on the subject in the server will probably understand where I'm coming from, though. I don't, in my experience, being judged for being another kin or a furry or an anime fan, it's different than experiencing discrimination based on your race, your gender identity, or religion, or whatnot. Like, for my being, I'm indigenous upon this earth. I grew up visibly mixed race and being outcasted and discriminated against for my ethnic features. That experience is far different than the judgment that I've gotten for being alter human or other kin. That's all I'm going to say on the subject, personally. Mm. And that is pretty much where I stand on it too, Luna. The concept of being an alter human versus, you know, race, uh, gender, whatever else have you. Two 
very different forms of I I wouldn't, I wouldn't even say two different forms of dis dis discrimination. Getting negatively spoken to about one versus um the other will have two very different consequences um up, up, upon your life. So I mean, whilst I can imagine, you know, this community getting big enough that discrimination might become an issue, I don't think it will ever be nearly as bad as people as as some at as some people are somehow claiming that that it is that it is right now. Mind you, historically throughout the community, there have been a lot of people who have cried oppression, like among us, I mean, among us. God damn it. I'm 27 and that shit still gets me. Um, <laughs> um, historically, there have been a lot of vulgar humans, drank and whatever else have you, that have claimed oppression, that have claimed discrimination, but um, it's either people trying to garner sympathy or trying to make a mountain out, a mountain out of a molehill. Um, most of these people... I hate to sound so harsh, but there are a lot of them that have never actually experienced proper dis discrimination and think that um and think that being trolled online equates to some kind of um systemic dis discrimination, whereas the reality couldn't be any further from the truth. And I believe this is one of the things that we could go back to um from from the past. I think this applies generally to how the internet works back then. Mm -hmm. um, people wouldn't get as worked up over this kind of stuff um, online back in the day, by which I mean, people would objectively see things for what they are and not try to, and not try to make a major controversy and politicize something that really doesn't have a place being politicized. Uh, that's, that's, I suppose, all I've got to say on that topic. Yeah, that's understandable. I've definitely, and yeah, that's another thing, like, in the earlier days of the Other King community and the internet in general, there was a, certain controversial topics were less polarizing. Like, in, a lot of times in the older days of the community you could discuss a controversial topic without someone immediately jumping to a severe conclusion or something like that or assuming the worst like many people do nowadays like think twitter discourse where people will just assume like twitter discourse where someone will just assume that you're saying something bad instead of just asking for clarification that that, that usually before. happens nowadays not in the older days or really? not just yeah, or or not just um asking or sorry or not just you know assuming the worst out of people. People, I mean, I guess this does facet into assuming the worst out of people. But um, folks these days anticipate being discriminated against when there is no room for that to happen. Or when I say no room for that to happen, I mean a cons like a a subject in which discrimination technically can't occur. Um. I.e. being um I.e. being an ultra human, depending on how you carry your identity. People just look for excuses to get upset. That's really what I'm trying to get to. Now, I'm not denying that this community will at will at some point be subject to proper discrimination, but allow me to be the first to say, uh we kind of would have brought it upon ourselves by politicizing something that otherwise did not need to be uh, politicized. Furries did it in the early 2000s, and mm -hmm. we see exactly where that led to, because um, in the early days of the internet, actually, hell, until the, until, until the term, until the uh, 2010s, the term persecution used to be a joke. It kind of is. I mean, the term itself is still, the term itself is still a meme, but in some weird ironic twist of face we actually see um we actually see people like we actually see people being driven to the edge of sanity or life for you know wanting to dress up in a bloody animal of costume i mean <laughs> but mm -hmm. the reason that even began was because there was a loud it's because there was a loud minority of people who claimed that there was 
discrimination happening um, um, against them. And an equally spiteful minority of people decided to turn it into decided to turn it into an actual thing. Um, psyops uh, would be a pretty good term for it. But I mean, for for as long as communities like 4chan and the Kiwi Farms have existed there have been movements to manipulate the views of people into like you know behaving in behaving in a certain way to have certain discriminations um in in certain manners to turn otherwise innocuous things into very harmful actions yeah that's that's an understandable viewpoint akira's once again asked a good question oh uh, yeah looking at different dragon king communities that are out there how far or close are they at their core um, I just wanted to comment on this quickly, and I'm sorry, and I'm sorry for keeping on bogarting the conversation, but the thing you have to understand is that, um, Akira, is that this is a very diverse community by its, by its very definition. There was no, even way back in the day when everything was isolated to, like, singular message boards where everyone would, um, where everyone would, you know, uh, congregate. There was no, like, singular set of anything. Nobody exactly came out and said, this is how everything works from, you know, now on. And then people, and then, you know, people diverse it into their own ways of doing things and their own, and, you know, their own schools of thought. Uh, yeah, um, this has been a very, like, all humanity in general, draconity, whatever else, it's always been a very individualistic thing. Even in communities where, like, even in, I've seen this in, like, communities of sub-50 members, um, most of the members will have very differing ideas, which may, which may sound similar at face level, but are actually very unique when you dig a little bit deeper. So, as much as far or close at their core, I mean, if I'm, if I am understanding the question correctly, there is... You can't really, you can't really quantify distance because there was no true point of um uh universal origin. Yeah, I I probably would second that. The question that arises for me um, is what is the core? If you're saying are they close in their core, what 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 is the core here? Is the core. The, oh, sorry, sorry. Go on. Yeah, is is the core meant in a way? The core. Um, of of draconity or the core of the different communities and um, if you would say the core of draconity i would say it's identity in a broader way um, not just in a like like social identities but like in identity in a sense of not who am i but what am i um, but if you will go down to different uh, to what the communities are in the core. I would say um, it, it's hardly possible to to combine them into one yeah in, into one group because I think the main differences are the way of communication and what is being transported. So I would say the spire to give an example here. Um, the the one of the like if you could put out a core it's like a meetup space i would say it's a meetup space it uh, you can probably divide it down more more thoroughly but in general i would say it's a meetup space um tumblr i, I don't know dork um but for example tumblr i would say is also a meetup space but not as and I use the term diverse, but not mix it up with diverse in a sense of um, identity diversity. Um, it's 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 Tumblr is uh, more down to presenting oneself, if it is my perception. But um, I cannot say too much about Tumblr. Maybe you uh, you can help me with that. But it's it, it's hard to get to get down to a core because. I would, wouldn't say that there is a combinable core. Mm -hmm. The closest, the closest thing I can think to a core is that a bunch of folks gathered together one day and said, "I am Dirk, therefore I am Dirk," 
And exactly. That is, you know, effectively the core. It is discourse about Derg. And everything that followed, I don't know. I don't know if I still can't quantify distance to that, but if I'm thinking of like a core concept, if there's a unifying factor here, it is Derg. And that is and that is simply what it is. Yeah. Oh yeah. And the meaning behind it. Draconic spaces, I guess. The core of really any draconic space is to just discuss, discuss draconity, discuss Derg. The draconic community as a whole, we are Derg. <laughs> we are Derg. <laughs> draconic exactly. community spaces, discuss Derg. Exactly. Only goal, Derg. We are Derg, resistance is futile. Oh, I should... <laughs> <laughs> That is the one unifying thing about the community. You identify as Derg, you are Derg. We love the Derg. Great, <laughs> the great just, holy equalizer. It's the great, the, uni- the great unifying force of the Dracona community. Yeah, so we can go ahead and log off here if everyone's okay with that. Thanks, Luna, for having me uh, on this episode. Um, thanks for doing this all, of course. And thanks for being part of that. Mm-hmm. And uh, indeed, uh, likewise for myself. And uh, thank you to our audience of two. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get there. It's fine. 